Hey there, crafty friends. Welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Melissa Miller. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Southern California, where it is currently snowing. And today I wanted to make a card for you using the Brilliant Wings dies. But before we get started with that, I just want to remind everyone that Tuesday, February 28th, is your last day to place a qualifying order out of our mini catalog, our annual catalog, or anything else that is online that's not in a catalog in order to earn those free celebration items. So keep that in mind. If there's something that you really want, you might want to go ahead and get it so you can earn those free items. So let's take a look at our kit here. Well, our dies. So we will be using the Brilliant Wings dies. We are going to be using three of the outline butterflies. And we will also be using this larger die, which happens to coordinate perfectly with the stamp. Um, the stamp on the front of the cover is smaller than actual size. So the stamp does fit the die perfectly. But we are not going to be using the stamp today. I think we will save that for another video. I was just uh, wanting to show you that there. So, but we will be using this die also. And we will also be using the brick die here. And to go with that brick die, we will be using our brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. So this card is a lot more detailed and entails a lot more work than what we usually do. So I did do quite a bit of prepping here. Um, this card would probably take you a good hour on your own. Of course, I will speed it up and I already did my die cutting, but keep in mind, this is a uh, more lengthy card. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got my four by five and a quarter panel that I already ran through my 3D mortar, or actually the brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. And I just love how that comes out. So let's get started here. First, we are going to start with our background. We need to get a piece of scrap paper here. And we are going to take our smoky slate. This is the lightest of the gray. And we are going to add some distressing. Now this typically isn't my type of card, not because it's detailed, but because I'm just not really into the distressed look, but I really, really like how that came out. I think that came out really nice. So we've got our smoky slate ink pad and we are going to gently drag it across our embossed paper here, just gently drag it. You don't want to put pressure because we don't want too much ink on there. I mean, we want some, but not a whole lot. So we're just going to gently drag that across there, just like that. Perfect. So now we want to add some color. Um, my sample here is blue, but we are going to do purple for demonstration purposes. So I've got my um, acrylic block that I got in one of our um, inclusive uh, card kits. So I'm just going to use this. I am going to bring in my Highland Heather ink refill. And I'm just going to put the tiniest little dot on here. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to create splatters. I want some splatters on here. I've got my um, aqua painter here, and we're just going to add color. And that, you know what, that looks a little light compared to what I really wanted. So let's put another drop, see if we can get it a little bit darker. And it is really snowing out there. We got like six inches on Wednesday, then it rained last night, and uh, quite a bit of it melted. There was quite a bit left, but now it's snowing again. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to load up some ink from my block. 
and just do splatters. I want splatters on this background and this works really, really well. Pretty easy. Just tap your pen and get some splatters on there. I think that's probably pretty good. And then we do need to bring in our, we're gonna set that aside. We need to bring in our microfiber towel and we want to clean this. So I'm just going to push and run that on my rag until the water runs clean. And then it is clean and ready to go for next time. You can see that the brush is still stained but the water's running clear, which means all the ink is out of there and you can go ahead and put it away for next time. And we are done with this, so we'll just wipe that off and then we will move on. So now we need to do some ink blending. I've got my gorgeous grape and my blender brush. I've got a panel that is, is this a full? Yes, this is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I've got my butterflies that I already die cut just to save a little bit of time. And the foil I used for these is from our silver foil pack. I used the darkest silver. I put some adhesive sheet on the back and then I die cut them. I did have to run it back and forth maybe four times to get a good cut from the adhesive sheet, but it wasn't that difficult. So I've got my darkest silver foil with adhesive sheet, and then I used these three butterflies to die cut them out. So let's take our ink pad here, and we need to make the backgrounds for our butterflies. So I've got gorgeous grape. I'm going to put some ink on there, and I'm just going to kind of look here. I want darker ink at the top of the butterfly wings and lighter at the bottom. So I can kind of see where that goes. And I'm going to get some purple on here. And your blending does not have to be perfect because we are going to die cut, cut this out. But I do want it pretty dark at the top. And then we can bring our butterfly back in and I can see that I need to take that darkness up a little bit. So what I will do is I will just come up a little bit with my ink there. And then after I've put some of that darker purple up at the top, I'm going to take my brush and gently, very light-handedly put some of that purple down below. So then we can bring in our butterfly again, see what we've got going on. And I think that's pretty good. I think we need just a little bit more right in there. Let's see. I think that's probably pretty good. I think maybe just a little bit darker here. And that will be pretty. So now we need to do this. We need to repeat this process for the other two butterflies also. And I'm just going to trim this off so we can go ahead and do that. We've got that one ready to be die cut. And then we need to do the same over here for our medium butterfly, and then also our smaller butterfly. So I am just going to go ahead and do that. We can kind of put that down and see where we want that ink, just like that. And so like I said, we got snow on Wednesday and it is still snowing out there. And it's okay. I mean, we're not used to snow. It seems whenever we get snow, all of San Diego County kind of goes a little nuts and tries to come up here just to see the snow. I wish they were a little more considerate, but we get through it. 
There we go. I think that's probably pretty good. Let's put a little bit more down here. And we will put that one aside. And then we've got our little one. Let's see what we've got here. So right in the middle. And like I said, that looks kind of, that is not a good blending job. But you know what? It doesn't matter because we are going to trim it out. So let's just get a, quite a bit of ink on there. We can put our little one there and see how we like that. I think that's probably pretty good. Maybe a little bit darker. There we go. So now I also need to ink blend on a piece that we will be cutting out our bricks from. So I am going to do this very light. I'm not even going to add any ink to this. I am just going to use the remainder of the ink that is on there from the butterflies. And I'm just going to cover this whole little piece here. Just like that. And I think that's probably pretty good. We can put our ink aside now. And so what I'll do is to bring in our outline, our outline die here is one whole piece. So what we need to do is we need to tape these on here where we want it to cut. So I am just going to look at that. This is my larger butterfly. I want it like that. And we'll do this three times, once for each butterfly. And I am just going to bring in some of my painter's tape. And if you feel like it's too sticky, if you're worried that it's going to rip your paper, just put it on your hand a little bit and that'll take some of that stick off. So I think right there is pretty good. I'm just going to tape down the die so it does not move. And then I am going to repeat that for each of these. I will just place them under there after I've done the other. And also, while I am at my die cut machine, I am going to cut out a whole bunch of bricks. So I will be right back. Okay, so here you can see I got our butterflies all cut out from the die. So now we can go ahead and start assembling this. And... I also cut out all of our little brick pieces that we're going to use on our panel. We can put that aside. We will bring in our butterflies. Now I did put adhesive sheet on these, but I am also going to use a little bit of liquid glue just to give it a little bit extra hold. Let's see if we can get that backing off. It looks like I used pieces when I put that on there. There we go. Perfect. And I will hold this with my tweezers and I am just going to put some liquid adhesive on the larger areas. And that looks like it got a little bit of paper on there. We'll just Put a little bit of glue on the antenna there and then a little bit in the larger open areas before we glue that down on our body. Just like that. You don't need a whole lot, just a few little dots should be fine. And then we can bring in our butterfly. We can place that on there and it fits perfectly. Just like that. Looks like I'm off a little bit. Let's redo that. There we go. I'm not over it, so that's why it's a little difficult. And now we can move it around just a smidge because we used liquid glue. And that's perfect. Isn't that pretty? I just love this purple. 
with the dark silver foil. So we will put a block on that. Let that sit for a minute and move on to our others. Okay, there we go. Now while our butterflies dry and that adhesive gets nice and secured, we can go ahead and move on to our panel. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take all of our little, well not all of them, we don't have to use all of them, but we are going to take some of our brick pieces and we are just going to scatter them. No rhyme or reason. We are just going to scatter them and place them all throughout our card. And I put some on the top, some in the middle. We're just going to put them everywhere. And some of them I did cut in half because we've got like half bricks in here. You get a couple that are half bricks, but I used up more than what we get from the die. So let's take a look. Here's a here's one. So you do get a couple little half bricks, but I did use more than what I got when I cut with the die. So we're just going to put these all over. Just like that. We'll put another big one up here. Just put them all over. And it's really nice because all of our ink matches perfect. And it is still snowing, my goodness. This is a uh, rarity for Southern California. We do get snow a couple times a year, but it usually doesn't last that long. I think this last has lasted quite a while compared to usual. I think tomorrow will be a nightmare on the freeways with everybody coming up to see it. We are actually right below Mount Laguna and Mount Laguna has received over 25 inches from this storm. I know that everybody else is getting hit pretty hard too. My mom and my son are in Minnesota, and I know they got hit really hard the other night. So I hope wherever you are, you are staying nice and warm and dry. That's the most important thing. All right, so I will just keep adding more colored bricks all over. So we've got all our pieces glued on there, our little brick fronts on there. And you could probably skip that step, but I just think it gives the card so much detail. That did take a while. It was time consuming. I'm not going to lie. That probably took between 10 and 15 minutes. Getting those placed and glued on there, it is a little time consuming, but so worth it. Okay, so now we can go ahead and we can build our card. So what I did next, I felt that a piece of craft foam was going to give me a much sturdier base than dimensionals. So I'm just, I cut a piece of craft foam. It's smaller than my four by five and a quarter panel. And I am just going to attach this with some of our stamp and seal. And that actually goes on there pretty well. I was surprised. It does go on rather nicely. Just kind of take your time. See, I'm going too quickly here. If you take your time, it rolls on there nice. See, that strip was perfect. And we're just going to attach this to our 
card panel and it gives me a little more stability throughout the whole thing versus just sections and that's what I wanted. So there we go, we've got that on there. And then like I told you, in order to save a little bit of time because this is a very time consuming card, I die cut my floral pieces. So what I did here was I went through my uh, dies that I have currently and I just picked some out. So this one came from my framed florets die set. So I just put a little FF on there so I know where I got it from. So I did one in the darkest silver from our silver foil pack. And I did one out of smoky uh, slate and one out of basic gray. So I've got three of each. And I did that for all my dyes. One from the darkest silver foil, one from smoky slate, and one from basic gray. This came from my Dainty Delights die. And I just marked it on there so I would know which die it came from, which set. Dainty Delights. I did my three and then I got the leaves from framed florets so I've got those all marked so I can make sure I put them back in the correct die set we're just going to take our pieces here and get our card assembled it's very simple it's very very easy to put together it just does take a lot of time with the die cutting so we've got that. I know I want my larger butterfly up in that left hand corner. I want my medium butterfly in the middle. And I want my little butterfly down in the bottom left. So we've got those placed. And then we can just take a look at what pieces we have here. So I know I put these long pieces up underneath the large butterfly, but I did cut them because we don't need that much to hang off and we don't want it to stick out the bottom. So I just trimmed them. We'll go ahead and place these. where we think they will look pretty. And I think that's good right there. We don't want to go all over the edge too much. I think right like there will be good for that. And then I've got a couple of my loose leaves over here that we're going to put under this wing like that and then I also have one more leaf over here under that wing and for this one Let's use a foil piece under here, but that's way too big, so we need to trim it down. I'm just going to give that a little snip right there, and then trim that out. We can put this right there, and then I think I also have a little leaf under there, and then for this butterfly, my medium butterfly, let's just trim all of these off right now because I know we don't need that stem that long. So we've got those trimmed off and we're going to put all three of these under here, but we're going to kind of offset them a little bit, just like that. That's perfect. And then I know I put 
this under there. We need to trim that. Looks like we trim it right there. That should be good. We will have plenty sticking out. And then along with our other foil leaf, I think those are placed pretty good. I will fix this one. Just like that. It's a little hard to hard to get them where you want them exactly without gluing them yet. But I think I've got everything where I want it. I am going to put these aside. And I will go ahead and get these all glued down. Okay, so here we've got most of our foliage all glued down. That also was a little time consuming. So let's add our butterflies now. So I'm going to give them a little crease at the body of the butterfly just to give it a little lift. And on the back, you can see that you've got it kind of bent. We are going to bring in some dimensionals. And I did cut one in half for my little butterfly and I'm going to put it more towards the center of his wing because I want to give it some lift once it's glued down and then I will take some glue put it on the body of my butterfly and I know where I want to put him because I've already got my foliage down there oh it would help if I took the release paper off. I wondered why it wasn't sticking. Gosh darn it. Okay, so we've got the release paper off of there now. And now he'll stick. And those dimensionals will also help hold our foliage pieces in place. So we're going to do the same thing. Let's do our big butterfly first. So we're going to fold his body just to give it some dimension. And then I put several, I think I put four dimensionals on the big guy, but we're going to, not going to necessarily put them right next to that fold. I am going to again, at the top of the butterfly, put them more towards the middle. Then I can put some glue on his body. We will take off our backings. Very important to remember to do that. We will take off our backings. And then all those foliage pieces are already in place. They look kind of sloppy, but that's okay. Because you will not see them. So now we can figure out where we want him. We don't want him hanging off too much. Because we do still have to put this on a card base. And fit it in an envelope. So I think that's probably pretty good right there. He's pretty tilted. That's good. Now we can bring in our medium butterfly and place him over his foliage. Again, putting it kind of in the middle of the big wings, just so it gives it extra lift. Oh my goodness, I just looked outside again and it is still snowing. I think it's supposed to last all day. Okay, so here is our medium butterfly. And we want to place him right about there. His dimensionals will help hold his foliage in place. And I did not glue down my leaves here yet for my large butterfly because I wasn't sure exactly where he was going to land. So I did hold on to those so we can put those in there now and just give it a little pressure on there so that glue adheres. Then I've got one more. I 
We'll just put that right under there. And that is pretty much done. Now we just need to do some embellishing and then add it to our card base. Isn't that pretty? I think that came out so pretty. And those bricks, the uh, ink blended bricks, they just add so much detail to that. So for my embellishments, for my jewels, I did use the 2023 in color jewels. But when I went online this morning to get the number and, you know, make sure they were in stock, they were not there. So an option that you can use are the 2123 in color opals. And they are the same exact colors. They're just a little bit more round. But I am using the in color jewels, but the opals are available in the online store. So let's add our embellishments here. I actually used quite a few. I am going to put one inside the center of each butterfly. I just love these. These came out so pretty. And then I am going to scatter all over a mix of the large and the small. We're just going to put them everywhere. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. YouTube just loves comments. I've had a few thumbs down recently. It's a little discouraging. I don't know if somebody did it on purpose, if it was an accident, but I apologize if someone didn't like my video. I am trying to cater to all different types of cards. So there we go. No, don't want that one there. Let's put it up here. Let's put a few more on there. I really like the small ones on here. How about, we didn't get one up here. We'll put one up there. I think we've got enough on there. That's so pretty. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I don't know. Decisions, so many choices. Okay. So that should probably be pretty good. So let's go ahead and get this placed on our card base. I did uh, top folding. And again, we're just going to flip this over. We're going to add some of our stamp and seal. And if you go nice and slow, it goes on the foam perfectly. And like I said, I went for foam because I wanted to make sure that the background was solid on the card. I think that's probably pretty good. I didn't want um, any chance of the whole thing kind of sagging. So that's why we did foam. And I really like to go that way sometimes. So now we'll add this to our card base. Perfect. And I did top folding because I just like the way it rests on a desk or a table better. So now we can add, do our sentiment and I am still ahead of the game. I am trying to do things earlier than I need them just to have them done because you never know what's gonna happen. I could not find a Mother's Day sentiment for my life, but I ended up finding one in our old Dressed to Impressed so I encourage you to get your old sets out. Look at those sentiments. And this could be any type of a card. This could be a birthday card. This could be a sympathy card. This could be anything. And I am only going to put three here because the butterfly has dimension under him. And this sentiment will rest on the butterfly. So I'm just going to take a little bit of glue right there. Put this right there. 
And that's perfect. We're done. Isn't that pretty? I just love this. Let me put my cap on here. So this is the one we completed right now, today. This was our sample in the blue. And then I've got some others. I've got a green one, and I just love that. And I did all of mine Mother's Day because I send Mother's Day cards to my friends that have kids. You know, I send one to my mom, but I also send them to other people. And make sure you puff up your little, your little, uh, petal, not petals, what are they? Wings, your wings. Puff up your wings so that'll stick out. So my blue and my purple I did in the darkest silver foil. Um, brushed metallic foil here. This is the medium gold. Brushed metallic in my pink. This pink is Melon Mambo. Then I've got a orange one. This is the darkest in the brushed metallic foil. Kind of a copper almost. And then I've got a yellow. I used the lightest um, brushed metallic foil and this is crushed curry. My orange is pumpkin pie, melon mambo. My green is mossy meadow and soft sea foam. My blue is night of navy. And then my purple is gorgeous grape. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.